Day two of the Screen Savers in D.C. week. Best part of the trip for me, I had a chance to go inside the NSA, the National Security Agency. It's a toss-up as far as I'm concerned between the NSA and DARPA for the smartest crew in federal government. It was pretty intense. We met at a remote location. We got sniffed for bombs by a giant German shepherd. We were ferried, not in our own vehicles, to the building by an NSA police group. And then we finally got to meet the folks, get our secret safety badges and go inside. Let's, let's check this out. Screensavers in Washington, ladies and gentlemen, I can't believe we're inside the building. We're here with the Director of Research, Dr. Hazeltine at the National Security Agency. Doctor, thank you so much for taking Great the time. Great pleasure to, talk to be here. Shoot, for those of us who aren't familiar with, with the NSA, what do you guys do here? We have two missions. Our first mission is to collect electronic information as it moves from point A to point B outside the borders of the United States. Our other mission is to stop our adversaries from doing the same thing to us because our job is to invent the future of the collection and protection of electronic information for the nation, not a small responsibility. This is for foreign intelligence only, so you don't have the most powerful computers in the world in the basement reading all of our email. No, we don't. Uh, you know, the enemy of the state mm -hmm. and movies like that make you think we can do lots of things that we don't do mm -hmm. and that we can't do. I wish we could do all of the things that they <laughs> said we could do. But the fact is, we do not collect information on Americans. We do not collect information inside the United States. We are strictly foreign intelligence. And the biggest problem we have is connecting the dots. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of dots out there, because our job is to collect dots, find the right dots, put them together, and turn it into actionable intelligence, which will prevent terrorist attacks. And that is a very difficult job. It requires a lot of high technology. So you have a demo for us. We have a demo. We're going to take you into our secret lab where we're doing all this magic. But first, okay. you have to put your eye about 10 inches away from that eye scanner so that the computer will know who you are and let you in. Why am I suddenly afraid? We are sorry. You are not identified. Oh, tough toenails, dude. <laughs> you know, I was looking forward to this interview, but I'm just going to have to go in there without you. It's been nice knowing you. Thanks. Oh, come on. Identification successful. Access granted. See you later. I shouldn't have worn the DEF CON t-shirt. So this room is going to illustrate the problem of connecting dots across many different data mm -hmm. domains. And I'm, I'm thinking of this, I'm seeing an array of monitors. I'm thinking, are these all running on separate systems? Right. Each one has a separate network. Mm -hmm air-gapped from other security networks. And there are different sources of collection, different sources of repositories of data, and different types of intelligence. You've got all these machines in a cubicle. You've got people running down hallways to get access to information. How do you bring all that together? Well, the situation that we're going to show you by analogy is not all that unusual, where a given intelligence analyst, and we call them all source analysts because they fuse together lots of different types of information, may literally have six different PCs, six different keyboards, six different monitors, and have to shuttle back and forth and remember what they saw and write down notes mm -hmm. in order to fuse all the information. And by analogy, what that's like is having different peaks at reality of different dots of information. And the analogy that we're going to use is looking through a knot hole. Okay. Right? So here we're going to look through the first knot hole on the first network, and you see an image or a piece of information which is kind of hard to understand. Right. Okay. Could be a cloud, could be muslin, could, could be, be a anything. Sheet. <laughs> exactly. Could be the inside of your eyelid on a bright day. That would be bad. <laughs> yes. Okay, here's another dot of information. A little bit more texture to it, but still not quite clear what it is. And here yet is another one. Starting to get a little more suggestive, but again, we don't necessarily know what right. it is. And then we continue on around to network number five and network number six. The problem is the human brain isn't very good at remembering fragmentary pieces of information unless you have photographic memory, as it were, and merging it all together. So the way we solve that, mm -hmm. again, by analogy, is our technology here called NetTop. So what are you guys putting together here with NetTop? Well, NetTop is the solution to the problem we've just been talking about. Mm -hmm. What it does is it takes all these different networks and data domains and fuses it into one place so a human can see it in one place at one time and connect the dots. And uh, continuing the analogy, it would be like fusing all of the knot holes. You put them all together, you see a picture that you wouldn't have seen without them all being in the same place at the same time. Got it. 
The NSA has created a way NetTop to secure all those networks and data domains and keep the information separate and controllable, yet still, well, essentially allow them to be displayed on one system. After the break, we're going to learn a little bit more about how the NSA uses classified intelligence or how the intelligence gathered by the NSA is actually used. We're going to talk about that when the screensavers continues.